everyone, we are live with Handmade Beauty Box. Thanks so much for joining me. So first of all, hello you streamers. You can ask questions below. I'd love to answer them live for you. Hello meerkatters, happy to have you as well. Today I'm going to be showing you what came in your Handmade Beauty Box this month as well as demonstrating how to make the project. This month's project is a crowd pleaser. It's a nail polish kit. So you can make all kinds of nail polish recipes and all kinds of nail polish colors in your own home. So you can mix and match any kind of outfit that you're wanting to match with. You can control the colorants. You can decide really everything you want to do with this project. Best of all, it's remarkably easy. Before we get started though, let's talk about what came in your kit. So first of all, you got one, you got one suspending nail polish bottle base and and then you got eight nail polish bottles that were that are empty obviously you got your 16 mixing beads you received four mini funnels for your colorant then you got 0.2 ounces of peacock glitter 0.2 ounces of red blue mica, 0.2 ounces of coral mica, 0.2 ounces of luster black mica, and 0.2 ounces of Cellini red mica. You also receive four mini scoops. And located in the very bottom of your box, you got these finished labels that are so cute. You just need to cut them out to get them ready to go onto your polish. And I'll show you how to do that at the very end. And then from home, you're going to want to do get yourselves an old towel and maybe some gloves is optional. I tend not to craft with gloves when I'm doing nail polish, but you may want to. The reason I don't like to use gloves when I'm doing nail polish is because I like the tactile feel of being able to actually kind of feel the bottles and see exactly really how how full this is getting now this is the hardest part if you have started playing with this at home there's a lot of different ways that you might think well I can get this nail polish base into my bottles but you want to know the truth the easiest way is to just freehand it in which means cut down on that coffee for the morning because you don't want your hands to be shaken you need your you need your base to actually be able to pour smoothly and easily into here so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the demo and then at the very end, I'm gonna show you all kinds of different colorants you can make. So, to get started, the first thing is to pour the base into the bottles. And remember, if you can't get this lip to open up, you just take a spoon, kinda of like a pickle jar, like, and you just kinda of pry it open to get the airlock. The first bottle is always the hardest to pour. You just let the base drip onto the lip of the bottle to get a smaller pouring stream. And then from there, it's smooth sailing. So, there we go. And I'm just gonna fill this bottle up really slowly. And when you're working, I want you to really remember that you are crafting with what's essentially a paint. This is a lacquer based product. And so you want to make sure that your work surface is covered because this would be pretty hard to get out of anything that you accidentally spill it on. So just make sure your work surface is covered. So now there's a couple ways to get your colorant into there. Um, you can usually leave one of these guys, because remember you have enough to make quite a few colors, uncolored as a base coat. So that's optional. But let's go ahead and get started. First of all, you're gonna add your mixing beads. And since nail polish is a super flammable product, I want you to make sure that you're not smoking when you're making your nail polish. And I also want you to make sure that you're not near any open flames. Treat this like you would any, literally any store-bought nail polish or any time that you are actually painting anything. So no flammable things, no sparks, definitely no smoking. There's a couple ways to get the colorants into your bottles. The first is to use a mini funnel. So these are the mini funnels that came with your kits. And this is definitely the slowest way to add the colorant. So I'm gonna show you three different ways to add colorant. So for my first color, I'm gonna go with five scoops of Cellini Red. So this is gonna be one, two, three, four and five 
And then I'm going to do black after this. But in order to get this color in, you just kind of jiggle it. It takes a while, not going to lie. I'll show you a couple other methods, but which are a little bit more messy. So if you are super clean or you live in a little small apartment and you don't want to get any sort of colorants anywhere, you can use the funnel. It takes a little bit longer than the other methods though, so it definitely takes a little bit of patience. These are micas, so these are cosmetic grade colorants, and these ones are specifically designed for nail polish. Not all colorants work great in nail polish, so if you're making nail polish at home and you're like, oh, I have food coloring in my, in my cupboard, I think I want to use food coloring, just know that food coloring definitely will not mix into your nail polish because it's water soluble. You need oil soluble or alcohol soluble colorants in order to in order to mix in. So if this isn't moving fast enough for you, and I don't know about you guys, but it's not moving fast enough for me, you can kind of use your mixer to kind of force that colorant in a little bit faster and force it down the little the little funnel, the little funnel. So you can do the funnel method for any of your colorants if you really want to keep it clean and you really have the patience of Job. Um, and then I'm going to show you with the black because this particular colorant uses black and red to achieve a really great dark color. And by the way, my nail polish is one that I made with the ingredients from this kit. So now we're going to go ahead and add our black colorant. So I'm going to show you the next method. The next method uses a piece of folded up paper. So take your piece of folded up paper and put your colorant in there. And I'm going to do five scoops of the Luster Black Mica. And there we go. And I'm going to put my container to the side there. And then I'm just going to scoop this, this folded piece of paper to kind of pour into the container. And here we go, slowly, because we don't want it all to come out into a big, in a big glob. There we go. It is going in there nice and slow, which is exactly what you guys want because we don't want this to go everywhere. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so now that we have our black in, and you can see how much faster that was than the funnel method, and take our brush here, I'm going to put it down into the colorant, I'm going to take our cap, and we're just going to put it on. And you can kind of hear I'm hearing a little bit of a snap a little bit to get it on. And then all you do is just shake, 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 shake. And keep shaking until it's fully mixed in. You can see it's starting to mix in, but it's definitely not there. One of the reasons that this base doesn't look as, say, clear as you would expect it to is because this base is a, special, is a special suspending base that you can use to suspend all tolerance. One of the things you may notice if you're starting to make nail polish at home is that you want to try and do glitter and you want to use some really fun colors in there, but regular bases don't always suspend those colors. So this one is a suspending base so that you always get your colors to stay suspended throughout the entire thing. So now I'm just going to just check in and see, and it looks like I have a little bit of black that's still kind of in the around the opening, so I want to get that mixed in really well before we start painting and before we start checking our colors. So here we go. Do a little bit more shaking. And so you can also fragrance your nail polish base, which is really fun. So if you want to customize your nail polish base, you can always fragrance it too. So now let's go ahead and check this color. I'm wondering what color this turned out to be. It's really, really, really pretty in the bottle. It's kind of a black red color, which is kind of striking. So let's see. Hmm. That's really nice. I think it's going to look great with two coats. 
Oh, I can kind of see the red from here. It's one of those kind of iridescent, kind of red, black colors. Very cool. Okay, and so now, if you wanted to actually try to do this the messy way, I'll show you the really messy way as well. So, here we go, doing another nail polish pour. Remember, start by kind of touching the tip, starting really slow, and then moving up to fill up your nail polish bottle with a steady hand. And it's going in really smoothly. Fill it up to the shoulder. Because remember, you need space to put your colorant in. And so with this one, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how to do some glitter. So this is what I'm going to tell you. Like, this is messy. You can just kind of try and scoop directly in. So if you don't mind losing a little bit of color, then this is definitely the fastest way. This is even faster. <laughs> this is even faster than using the folded up paper technique and it's definitely faster than using that funnel. And I'm going to add a little bit of fragrance to this one before I start mixing it in. And I want this to be really glittery, so I'm adding a lot of glitter to it. And since this is a suspending base, it will stay nicely suspended the entire time. Ooh, I'm so full. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of fragrance after I've got this mixed in just a teensy bit. Let's see. Pretty sure I forgot my mixing balls. So this is not going to mix in without the mixing balls. So I'm going to stick those in there in just a second. Okay. Here are my mixing balls. Okay, Miriam or Amber, are we getting any questions? Because I'm going to be mixing for just a minute or two. Can you use craft grade glitter or glitter that you have at home? Ooh, that's a really good question. Can you use craft grade glitter or glitter that you have at home? Wow. So as we talked about earlier, nail polish is some, kind of sort of like a really a, like a, a, a paint really. And the, the Handmade Beauty Box nail polish is toline free, it's DBP free and formaldehyde free. So it's definitely a really great quality of nail polish base, but it still acts as a solvent sometimes to some colorants, especially some craft store glitters. So if you use a craft store glitter, you definitely run the risk of that craft store glitter dissolving in your nail polish or kind of falling to a lumpy goop at the bottom. So no, you can't actually use craft store glitters. You want to only use nail polish approved uh, safe glitters. And so you can get refills for these on handmadebeautybox.com or you can buy some nail polish glitters in bulk from brambleberry.com. So you can see this is mixed, starting to mix in really well. And now I'm just going to try, test out this, test out the coverage and just kind of see how it is before I before I add any, see, I mean, that's fine for sparkle, but I kind of want a little bit more, so I'm tempted to add a few, well, actually, that's good. I was going to say I'm tempted to add a little bit more glitter, but I think that's really good. So now, in order to do any sort of fragrance, like, say you want to fragrance this, you just do one drop of fragrance for each nail polish bottle, and that is a really good light, light, light usage rate. You don't want to do too much in the way of additives, because if you do too much in the way of additives, you actually can end up accidentally ruining your nail polish base. So only just a little bit of fragrance, just enough to kind of mask that natural odor that you get with the nail polish base. Okay, so any other questions that's come in while I've been mixing? We had a few late comers. Can you I like comers. Can you talk about colorants again and, and different options? Absolutely. Okay. So um, colorants and different options. So when so your kit came with five different color options, and you always want to be using nail polish or. Um, 
You always want to be using nail polish safe colorants. So, for example, this is the Cellini Red, Cellini Coral, Luster Black, Red Blue Mica, and then, of course, a nail polish safe glitter. If you use oxides and you want to use oxides or clays in your nail polish base, you may end up finding that the clays or the oxides needs a lot of pre-mixing. So for example, you may mix those with a little bit of rubbing alcohol or a little bit of oil, but know that they tend to clump a little bit more. They do give great coverage though, but they do tend to clump a little bit more than micas. And definitely, no matter what, don't use any water-soluble colorants, so no food coloring. If you use food coloring, it won't mix it. It'll just pool at the top. Any other questions, Courtney? So we added fragrance oil, what about essential oils? Ooh, we did add fragrance oil, can you use essential oils? That's a great question because essential oils have somewhat of a different consistency than fragrance oils, but absolutely, you can use most essential oils. Some of the citrus essential oils I would stay away from because they tend to thin things out. So if you're gonna use essential oils in your nail polish base, make sure you just do a test batch of say one nail polish bottle as opposed to doing an entire bunch of them. Because for example, Orange essential oil will take the shine off of your glitter. So you definitely want to do a little bit of testing if you're going to use essential oils in your nail polish base to customize it. There's one more question. One more question coming in. Um, I used another nail polish base and the colorant sank to the bottom. I used another nail polish base and the colorant sank to the bottom. So there are a couple companies out there selling what I like to call Frankenstein or Franken polish bases out there. The key to making sure your colorant stays nicely suspended, this glitter stays nicely suspended through your entire bottle, is to use a suspending nail polish base. And that's what came with your monthly box this month from your handmade beauty box. It had a suspending base. And that's really key to making sure all of your colorants stay nicely suspended throughout the entire bottle. If you use a regular nail polish, base, what you'll find is that your heavier colors, like your glitters, will just kind of boop, sink to the bottom. So always make sure you're using a suspending nail polish base if you want your glitters to stay evenly suspended throughout the entire thing. Any other questions before we sign off? You guys, I really want to see your nail polish creation, so let me show you a few of mine to get you started. So right here, these are all the colors that came with your box, and these are the different colors I was able to create. So let me talk to you about those formulas. First up, we have five scoops right here, five scoops of Cellini Red, and five scoops of the Luster Black Mica, and I think it turned out so beautifully. Just a gorgeous kind of purple, a romantic, dark, very, very sophisticated purple. Then this guy right here, our nice, bright, happy, wanna go on a vacation pink, is five scoops of Cellini Red, and then six scoops of the Red Blue Mica. So that's that lighter pink that came in your box. Right here, this really gorgeous kind of shell pink is done with seven scoops of the Red Blue Mica, that's that lighter pink in your box, and one scoop of the Luster Black. That Luster Black really gives it just a touch it needs to tamp down that kind of girly bubblegum pink and make it more of a sophisticated urban type of color. Um, I think it'd be perfect for like going out on the town. I mean, I can really see this in New York City. Yum. So then, this one is easy. This one's just a really perfect pink. It's one scoop of color, and it's just one scoop of the coral mica. And this looks kind of dark in the bottle, but when you put it on your nails, it is literally the most wonderful, romantic, kind of uh, naturally coral pink color. It'd be perfect over a French manicure, or just if you wanted to look like you had more natural or nude nails. This guy right here is 10 scoops of that glitter that came with your Handmade Beauty box and then two scoops of Luster Black. Again, that Luster Black just to give it a more sophisticated touch. And then finally, this guy is four scoops of red and one scoop of Luster Black. And that's this one right here. And that is a really great red, a really good update on red for the spring and summer. So I'd love to see what you're making. So make sure when you are posting your, your photos to Instagram and Twitter and our Facebook page that you're tagging hashtag HBB show and tell because I want to see what you're creating and get inspired by everything you guys are doing too. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Handmade Beauty Box. I'm really happy you got to join me. And after I sign off, trust me, I am going to be peeling back these nice little labels that I've cut out and I am going to be 
labeling my nail polish base. So I end up with 10 cute jars of perfectly labeled nail polish that I created myself. Until next time, bye guys.